Hey everybody, Dawn here from Tech Savvy Creative. Today, we are going to see if we can create an automation that will take our leads from the knot and automatically import them into the CRM that we use. Okay, so if you are a wedding vendor or a photographer, you have probably experienced the frustration that comes when you get a lead through the knot or wedding wire or a tool like this. They do not go into your client management system. They end up in your inbox, you lose sight of them, you don't track them, they're not part of your reporting, all of the above. So we're going to see if we can create a Zap in Zapier that will take that lead email and generate a client in the CRM that you're using. So I use Sprout Studio for both Tech Savvy Creative and my photography business, Don Elizabeth Studios, and I love Sprout. If you're interested in Sprout, there's a link for you in the description below. But this will hopefully, ideally, work with other CRMs like HoneyBook, Dubsado, Tave, and whatever is available to you in Zapier. So let's dive in. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create a Zap and I'm going to connect something called Email Parser. Uh, we're going to come in here and just validate that the not is not in here. Yeah, it definitely is not. Uh, we're going to go to Email Parser. So email parser by Zapier, and I want to connect it to Sprout Studio. There we go. Okay, so when I get a new email in the email parser, and we're gonna set that up here in a minute, then I want to create a lead in Sprout Studio. So this is exactly what I want to do. I'm gonna click try it. So to do this, we're gonna be using the email parser in Zapier. So what that is, it is a tool that will take an email and we will define this piece of that email corresponds to this variable. This piece of this email corresponds to this variable. And then basically it's gonna go through and parse those emails to get the information that we want. So I need to go to connect a new mailbox is what they call it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a new tab and I'm gonna to go to parser.zapier.com. I'm going to click login. And then I'm gonna log in with my Zapier account. So I'm gonna click Create Mailbox, and it's gonna generate me this funky email address. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Skip Waiting. Now, if I want to come in here and customize this email, I totally can, but you want this to be something that people just can't guess because you don't want spam and all of that good stuff to bombard you. So I'm just gonna leave this as is. So now what I wanna do is I want to send the email that I want to use as the template to this inbox. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back here. Oops, I'm gonna log back in here. I'm gonna go to my mailboxes. So this is the inbox that I just created. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this. Command C for copy. I'm gonna jump over to my inbox. I'm gonna to come to this email and notification. I'm going to come over here and click forward. I am going to paste that Zapier email inbox address, and then I am going to send it. Okay, so I have just forwarded on that email from the knot to the Zapier mailbox that I just created. So now I'm gonna come over here to view emails, and then you can see here that I have an email from the studio that came in. So I am going to come down here to this bottom piece. I have a few different buttons down here. Extracted is what it's defaulted on. Original, I can click on the original and see the full email. This is what we are going to be using to create our template. So I am gonna come over here to, let me move my face. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> move my face over here. I'm gonna come here and click on template. I need to create the template. So I am going to create the template that is going to tell Zapier what information I want to pull from this email. So I'm gonna click here. Here's my initial template. Okay, so and so sent you a lead. Now what I'm going to do is go through this email and tell it what information I want. Okay, first thing I'm going to do, is I'm gonna come down here. Now let me bring up this email so you can see it on an original standpoint here. Okay, so when it comes in to me from the knot, it says, here's a note. That was like the little description that came in through here. First name, last name, wedding date, their email address, and so on. So I'm gonna come over here now, 
And I'm going to come into this email and I want to say this little piece right here where it says first name. See how that pops up? This selection is first name. Okay, save. So now Zapier knows that whatever is in that little section is the first name. So now I'm going to do this one, last name, save, wedding date. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to say the date. Their email address. So I am going to highlight this. Now, sometimes when somebody sends you a lead, they have like their real email address in here. And other times this is member dot the not. Now, when you're using the not, you can actually reply to this email address from your own inbox and it will go into their inbox. So I would probably do this just to get things going. And then once you get their real email, then you'll be updating that manually. But again, our goal is just to get this out of your inbox and into your client management system. So call this email, save. Um, I can save over the location, guest count, all of that other stuff, whatever. I'm going to take this. I'm going to say location. Okay. So that'll work for now. Now it's gonna ask me body source, um, should the mail extract contact, plain tense, um, whatever content is available, go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna let it choose the parser engine. Okay, I'm going to click save address and template. So now I will have this template from this new parser email. So if I click on output, yeah, first name, last name, date, email address, location. All right, so our template is all good to go. So I'm gonna come back over here to Zapier. And here's the Zap that we were working on. So I'm using the email parser by Zapier. And I want this to trigger when a new email goes into that inbox that I just created. So I'm gonna say new email. And it's gonna ask me what account. Um, I actually have two accounts depending on what business I am doing this in. So just chose the tech savvy creative one. And the mailbox, remember, it ends with 72. So I'm going to remember that right there. Okay, so now I'm going to click continue. Test my trigger. Great. So it found that template email that we brought in there earlier. So I'm going to come down here and scroll through. Okay, and I can see that all my variables are in there. Looks great. I'm going to move on. Okay. So now I want to connect my Sprout Studio account to this Zap, and I want to take information from that parsed email and then pass it over to Sprout. This is where the magic happens. So remember in that template email, we were saying like, this is first name, this is last name. Well, this is where we're going to come in and we're going to tell Zapier this is the information that I need. So the first name, I'm going to come in here, and you can see that because I selected that template, it's finding that first name that we created. So I'm gonna click first, output first name, output last name. Their email address was a field that we created. So I'm gonna click options. Parse output email is what I want. And if I had information like their phone number and all of that good stuff, I could totally add it here as well. So now I have my shoot date. So in that, email template, we had the wedding date. So that would be my shoot date in Sprout. So I'm going to use, it should be parse output location. No, it was parse output date. There it is. Okay. And then if I want to add a location, I could, uh, I guess that location's a little bit iffy because it just gave me like a city. It didn't give me a ton of information. So I'm probably not going to include that. If I really wanted this to work better, I would probably have to go like really break down that email itself. So we're going to skip that for now. So a couple more things, choose value. So if it's coming from the not, it's going to be a wedding. So I'm going to make sure that it auto defaults to wedding. And that way, if I have any workflows that trigger for wedding clients and such, I can automate that process as well. The brand is going to be the studio. I do have multiple brands in Sprout Studio, which is one reason I love Sprout. 
And then the lead source is going to be the knot. So I'm going to type in the knot. Okay. And then additional notes. I might actually add the entire email into this. So I have all of that. Now I could go in and create another variable in that parser and like put like the little description or the note or whatever. Um, but I do want to make sure that I have all of the information that I need. So I might just come in here and just put the whole email in there. So I'm going to say email body plane. Cool. Click continue. So now that we've said, here are the variables that are coming from that not email. And then here's what I want you to do with them. So these two things should now be connected through this parser. Let's take a look here. I'm going to test the action. So now if this works, I should be able to go into Sprout Studio and I will see a new lead that has first name, last name, my email address, the whole shebang. So let's see if that worked. Okay, so here I am in my Sprout Studio dashboard. Uh, that's really funny because I just did that webinar <laughs> with them. I'm gonna go ahead and close out my own little advertisement there. So you can see here that I do have a new lead. I have received a new wedding lead a minute ago. So Zapier was able to send over the information from that email parser into Sprout. So let's take a look at it and make sure everything looks okay. So let's see here. First, last wedding, which is great. That's the default way that I have this set up. It did assign it to a wedding under Donald Elizabeth Studios. The inquiry date was today. The shoot date is the date that I assigned to it in that not inquiry. So perfect. Contact form details, it's a note. So I can come in here and I can see the entire not email, which is so cool, guys. Oh my gosh. Okay. So now here in Sprout Studio, if I had an automation set up that when like, I get a wedding lead, then do this, X, Y, Z, that whole thing is going to continue forward as expected. And I didn't have to input anything, which is amazing. I'm gonna come over here to clients just to double check. This is the thing that I was a little worried about. Now, again, the not is a little weird when it comes to email addresses. If they are not logged in, it's only gonna give you their, like the not, special email address thing. And if they are logged in, they do have the option of giving them their real email address. So for now, as a photographer, I'm going to respond to this inquiry to that not profile email. It's going to put it into like the little not messenger that they have. But eventually when I do get the client's actual contact information, I will come in here and update this. So this is not going to that little not portal for them. So but again, the whole purpose of this is to get this out of our inbox and into our client management system where I can better organize and really see what's happening with my leads. Okay, so we're gonna take this a step further in this example. Now, right now, when I look at the zap, this zap takes place when an email gets sent to that parser, okay? This doesn't happen if it ends up in my inbox. So we need to get that email from the knot into this email parser. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. So one way is you could change your knot email to that Zapier parser. So anything that comes in goes to that email address directly. Now I am not a fan of this because there's other messages that you might get from the knot. There's other situations that might happen and I don't want them to all to go to that email parser. I want them to go into my inbox and then to the parser if it is appropriate. So we're going to add another step here. Now, could I do this in Zapier? Probably, but I think it's going to be best to do this inside of Google itself. So, or whatever email provider you have, I have a Google account, so I'm going to go set up that rule in my inbox. So let's go do that together. Okay, so here I am in my inbox. I'm gonna come up to here, this little gear, and I'm going to click on see all settings. So now that I'm in here, I'm gonna come over here to filters and blocked addresses. So in order to filter this well, I'm gonna to have to figure out a way to identify this email from all of the other emails in my inbox. So I'm gonna click create a new filter. Now, when they send me an email, when I get a lead from the knot, it doesn't say it's from the knot, it just, as actually from the client's email or their not email address. So it's unique each time. 
So what I could do here is I could say the subject, um, and it, the subject was sent you a new lead, I believe. Sent you a new, or sent a new lead. Hold on, let me go back to that email here. Sent you a lead. So I'm gonna copy that. Okay, subject, sent you a lead, doesn't have, okay, so we can filter this a lot more. So I'm gonna click search and see if I can find it. Okay, so we can take a look here. Here are some examples of different not emails that came in from me or that came into my account and I can see that it's pretty consistent. So I'm gonna use that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna click on this little option right here. This is exactly what I want. I'm going to click create filter. Now it's going to ask me what I want to do with this filter. So I don't necessarily want it to skip my inbox. I am going to get it twice if it's successful. I'm going to get it once from the knot and then once from sprout. So I'm okay with getting it twice. It just validates that it's working correctly. And I like to have that extra like notification that things are working. So I'm going to not skip my inbox. I can mark it as red if I want to. I can apply a label. But here is what I want to do. I want to forward it. So we're going to click Add Forwarding Address. And then it's going to ask me for this Add Forwarding Address. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over back into our email parser. I am going to highlight that email address. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to add this address. Forwarding mail, proceed. Okay, a confirmation email has been sent. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop back into Zapier. I'm gonna go to the email parser. I'm gonna log back in here. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna click view emails. I did get a confirmation email from them, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my code. Again, I'm just validating that this is something that I actually want to do, and this is just to prevent things and keep everything safe. Okay, so I don't want this to automatically forward all of my email into this inbox. Um, so I just wanna make sure the disable forwarding is clicked. Now I'm gonna come back here to these filters Oh, did I lose it? Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna click create new filter, subject, sent you a lead. I'm gonna click create filter, forward it to, there is my Zapier robot. So I'm gonna click create filter. Okay, so now in theory, when somebody fills out the form on my not profile, it's going to come into this Gmail inbox or whatever you're using. It is going to be noticed by Google and it's going to be forwarded to the Zapier account. That Zapier account will then trigger because it is watching that inbox and it will trigger each time a new email happens. So we'll see what I've done here in a second and then we'll hopefully send it to Sprout. So let's test this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go on a quick tangent here. We need to test and test and test ourselves. We don't test with our clients. So make sure you go through this process. Make sure that you spend some time and validate that this is actually working the way you're expecting because we don't want to create a headache for yourself, but also for your clients. So make sure you test this. Now what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in here into Zapier and I'm going to publish the Zap. Publish and turn on. Okay, Zap is on. There we go. All right, looking good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find my profile on The Knot. So Don Elizabeth Studios, The Knot. There I am. Okay, so Here's where I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna test this out. So I'm gonna do Jane Doe. I'm going to give it a different email. Okay, wedding date. I wanna assign it to something different. So I'll do the 30th of March, 2024. Click request quote. Okay, so now I should get an email as Don Elizabeth Studios. 
that somebody has inquired with me on the knot. So we're going to hop over to this inbox here. Click on inbox. Jane Doe has sent you a lead. So we're good there. And look at that. I haven't even like gone to check if Sprout is working, but I just got a notification from Sprout before I could even tell you that this was working, that I have a new lead in Sprout Studio. So let's take a look at this. Here it is, Jane Doe. There is that email address. It's working. So I'm gonna come over here to Sprout. I'm gonna come over here to Overview. I am getting notifications on my watch that I have a new lead and here we go right there y'all so if you're still with me this is a long process but now i do not have to go in and manually enter all of these leads from the knot into my client system now if I was still shooting and if I was still actively using these websites, I would also create a separate mailbox and template for something like Wedding Wire or any other place that you get leads from. I actually do this as well for my Show It website. I use Show It. I love and adore Show It. If you haven't heard of Show It or used it before, I'm going to add a link in the comments below. Sometimes the embedded contact forms that are from our client systems are not quite the aesthetic of our websites. So I use this exact zap to create my form natively within Show It, and then that email that comes to me from the Show It contact robot, I send it over to the parser and this whole process does the exact same thing. So. Super excited about this, and I cannot wait to hear how you guys are going to use this in your business. Again, I'm Dawn from Tech Savvy Creative. Please subscribe and like this video. Please take a minute and subscribe to our channel. We are in the process of really ramping up our YouTube efforts here, so I would love for you to be along with the ride. So I would love for you to join us and learn some fun things along the way. So until next time.